Hey folks, Jamie here with Journey North. Just cleaning up these double bits. Um, I usually use a grinder with a some sort of wire brush. This one here is a fine, just the regular ends on it. You can get the ones with the loops in it as well. Um, the fine doesn't seem to scratch the metal at all. Takes the rust off. Um, I don't ever take the heavy, I don't polish is what I'm trying to say. I, I like to leave them so they're black. They got some rust in the pit, stuff like that. And uh, when I get done here, I'll uh, put a little oil on them. And that kind of really brings out the vintage color to them. If I get something that's got a, a good stamp on it, I'll be a little more careful with it. But all mine are users. I don't buy anything hot. You know, I don't buy $100 axe heads. And they do make them, folks. Believe it. Uh, you get a Kelly Black Raven from the 30s, 40s, that era. They go $500 for an old beat-up head. Um, this one here. Is that old timer head I polished up the stamp a little bit on this one uh, we'll get these I'll get these in the house in a little bit see if I can get some better shots for you this here's that uh, true temper without the bevels I got the bevel one over there um, just gonna finish cleaning this up with this uh, also use some little brushes to get inside the inside the eyes here get all the chunks off anything loose rust dirt don't polish that inside head, though. You, you want it rough so it sticks on the wood real well. You polish it up, it just makes it slippery. It comes off the head, stuff like that. Leave it rough, but you don't want anything in there. Get that rust out of there. You can see the dust. I don't know if you can see it, but there's dust, old rust coming out of there, dirt, debris. Clean it up like that. Um, if they're real bad, I'll probably do it on this one, too, before I oil it. Put a little gasoline in there. That, that seems to clean it up well as as well as anything they make they make uh, different polishes um, abrasives stuff for cleaning rust you could do the the electrolysis type deal on it is that what they call it I don't remember uh, a lot of ways to do it I, you know me I'm, I'm, I'm a hand tool type guy for the most part so just gonna finish cleaning this up here and then uh we'll take them inside and see if I can get you a little better uh, a little better look at these guys. See you in a bit. Hey guys, we're uh, it's the next day. I got in last night after polishing these axes up a little bit and did a little research, just because I like to get a rough date on how old these are. Old timer, Kelly Howe Thompson Company, Duluth, Minnesota. This was Kelly Howe Thompson. It's a hardware company, Duluth, Minnesota, founded in the 1890s. They made tool and hardware, mostly for the northern lumber and logging industries here in Wisconsin, Minnesota, UP of Michigan. They come out with a little more famous axe head that right across here would say Hickory, quite a bit bigger, nicer stamp. And uh, they were produced, from what I can find, by Sager Chemical Axe Company, which makes a hell of an axe. For you, for you axe guys know what I'm talking about, one of the most sought after, for users anyways. And uh, I did find a catalog clipping on the internet from 1936 that refers to this old timer being a great axe and uh, the Hickory brand is just as great as axe as its predecessor. So if this was a predecessor in 1936, that tells me this one's pre-1936. That's about all I could really find on it other than a few other examples on eBay. Not a real sought after axe but Duluth Minnesota it's my old stomping grounds northern northern Wisconsin Lake Superior that whole area did a lot of hunting up there still make it up there often just a great little head I also did some research on these other two I found uh, we'll start with this one here the only stamp on the back is a pressed in 3-2 which would have been a, like a model number um, I found this one in a 1967 True Temper Catalog. Doesn't say Kelly on it. just says True Temper Flint Edge. The Flint Edges are great axes. Even once you got into the 60s and 70s, they were still making pretty good axes at that point. Three and a half pound heads. Um, True Tempers varied quite a bit in uh, dates, times, stuff like that. So, like I said, it's hard to, hard to see what you have here. Um... Overall, good quality, though. Then we got that one with the bevel. A little beat up. 
we're trying to get here. You can make out a stamp here. ECT, that would have said Kelly Perfect. Made in, I think that'd be Charleston, West Virginia, USA. And the OFF would have been Registered Patent Office with a patent number underneath. That's all beat off. Beat, you can't see that anymore. Beat right through here, too. I'm sure there was a stamp here at one point. Um, but you can't really see. It might have said, said uh, Dynamic. Might have said Vulcan. Um, it's hard to say what exact model this was. But you can make out the, the True Temper right there yet. Kelly True Temper with bevels. These bevels are a little more sought after just because they're nice profile. A lot of these old axes are beat up right through here on both sides. So if your axe head got loose out in the field, they would take another axe and hit them right here to tighten them up. How do I know that? Because I watched my grandpa do it. I've done it myself before I uh, kind of got into axes. It's just you do what you can to keep on working. A little hard to keep these in focus, but I had a few people ask about them, so I just thought I'd share this. All right, I'm going to head out to the garage and see if I can get one of these uh, put on a handle tonight. Catch you later, guys. Take her easy.